We're starting with your name on the title. I will be going pretty fast because we are up against lunchtime and I want to make sure you have the notes. As you know, I am recording this. I will also take photos of each page. So get what you can as we go. Basically, this little mini book is in place of having to look through the entire proofs thing. I don't expect you to memorize the exponent rules. I expect you to know how to use them. And this will be a mini book that shows you how they work when you forget when it's been a few weeks. Okay? So turn to the next page. And I want you to draw a line all the way across the top of the page above where it says product rule and power rule. And we are going to title the top of this like bases. We are starting with the product rule. I would like you to put x squared times x cubed and show that those have the same base. Think back to our Desmos activity. If I'm mul multiplying x squared times x to the third, what's going to happen to my exponents? I'm going to do x 2 plus 3. I want you to point an arrow and show that we add with the product rule. And that equals x to the fifth. The power rule is when we have something raised to a power multiplied to another power. Who remembers from Desmos what we do with this one? Yep, we multiply those exponents. So this <laughs> becomes y to the sixth. And this has a phrase that goes with it. The power rule is power to a power, reminding us that when we see those two raised multiplied, we multiply them. I want us to divide our page up a little bit by putting dashes down the middle and another straight line across the bottom two spaces. Who was who were my people that had the quotient rule? That was table three. Okay, the <coughs> quotient rule. And you guys were starting to experience this in Desmos around screen six today. If I have x to the ninth over x to the third, what's the action that we take? Yep, we subtract. X <laughs> to the sixth is our answer there. Okay, uh, I had a sp an extra space in here, so I just put a little fun fact in. I want you guys to draw the division symbol. This also is division, is it not? Yep. Okay. So the division bar has a name. It's called the vinculum. Nice. Yeah. If you ever won a bunch of money on Jeopardy because of that fact, I want you to come visit. Okay. Okay. Turn the page. <laughs> Maybe bring me a cup of coffee. <laughs> this should go a little bit faster because we're going to fill in some blanks. <clears throat> if a blank or blank, that's going to be if a constant or variable does not have a visible exponent, then the exponent is an invisible one. I heard table two verifying that today in their work. So an example, if I have x squared y, z, that really means x squared, y to the first, z to the first. 
We love our invisibles in math. There are also invisible ones in front of each of these. You guys don't need to do this, but I'm just going to show it. Okay, next step. I want you guys to make a giant zero on the next page. We will be putting things around in the corners, but I want you to circle what I typed with a zero. And below it, put an X so it looks like X to the zero power. That's a big zero. It equals zero. Anything raised to the zero power equals one. <laughs> you may not have gotten to this part of the proofs, but it's my favorite one to show why this rule is, because I was just told this is what it is, but your proof pages show why this works. So I just want some examples. If I've got x to the zero power, it equals one. If I have 1,000 to the zero power, it equals one. Wow. If I have x squared, y to the third, z to the fifth, raised as a power to a power, and that new power is a zero, that whole thing equals one. Okay. I like that. Okay, last two pages, negative exponents. We're gonna do this pretty fast, and then I'm gonna have you guys get back into Desmos for a quick reflection. So negative exponents. The first blank is negative because I want this phrase to read negative exponents are equal to their positive reciprocal. There is a phrase that is used to remember this rule. Cross the line and change the sign. So to turn a negative exponent into a positive exponent, write the positive reciprocal. And we are going to do two really quick examples down here. I want you to write x to the negative third over y to the negative third. I'm going to cross the line. So this is the numerator. By crossing the line, it's going to become the denominator and I'm changing the sign to a positive. And the same happens with the negative in the denominator. So this one has its positive reciprocal here, and this one has its positive reciprocal here. One more example with numbers instead of exponents. If I have one over five to the negative third, its positive reciprocal is going to be 5 to the third power over 1. And 5 times 5 times 5 equals 125. <laughs> Boy.